So calculated fees. Okay. Calculated fees typically in Workday we use on the delivered fields actually, whatever Workday provides, right? Um, so we use a delivered fields as a source for the calculated fields. Calculated fields is nothing but which can use the delivered fields to tweak the data. Okay, how you wanted to see the delivered data, how you wanted to, you know, do any kind of mathematical operations, logical expressions, okay, any kind of uh, data match, if you wanted to combine multiple fields, do any kind of formatting on the data, okay, formatting date values, formatting text values, formatting numbers, getting data from primary business object or related business object, and um, do any kind of evaluations, conditional execution. So if you're aware of um, any kind of uh, programming, you know, we can actually do something like, if this is true, get this value. If this is false, get this value. Kind of logics we'll be seeing, right? Similar kind of conditions we can actually add in um, uh, calculated fields. You can actually do any kind of, um, you know, constant values, constant dates, build a brand new date field as per your choice let's say if um you know employee hire date is um one one twenty twenty four okay okay so now um if employee is getting terminated generally end of the month employee benefits um has to get terminated if employee is getting terminated on first week second week or third week um, of the month the benefits of the employee should get terminated end of the month actually so we don't have any delivered field that actually gives this value. So we need to, we have an option to actually go for calculated fields that actually uh, looks based on the higher date. Okay. So based on the higher date, based on the termination date also, you can actually do date and uh, month you can actually take and um, or date and month you can take end of the month and year you can take um, current year. So in that way, you can actually build date as per your choice, as per the requirement also. So we can perform whatever your programming any programming language can do so your calculated fields can perform the same only the thing is you'll not write any script or you'll not write any kind of program but all the functions we call it as functions calculated field functions there are around 30 functions that we have we typically use those functions to enhance the data that worked as provided tweak the data modify the data you know, do any kind of logical, uh, you know, expression to, you know, retrieve the data, mathematical expressions, conditional logics. So you can do a lot of things in the calculated fields to tweak the data. The ultimate purpose of the calculated field is to tweak the data or to enhance the delivered data that Workday provides. So when you create a calculated field, the source of the field can be delivered field that Workday provides or any existing calculated field that provides. Okay. If you have any kind of existing calculated field, if you wanted to enhance the data of that calculated field, we can use calculated field and call that existing calculated field. Or if you have any delivered field that you wanted to change something, okay, change the format or change something, you know, data visibility or, or do any kind of mathematical operations, you can actually use calculated fields. So basically, all I can say is whenever you wanted to go for calculated fields, here, the source of that calculated field will be delivered field or any existing calculated fields. Okay. And the purpose of the calculated field is the single line you can say to enhance or to tweak the existing data that sits in Workday, which are which can be a delivered data or which can be a custom, uh, which can be existing calculated field data. Okay. In that way, you can actually define a calculated fields. You can use this calculated fields mostly in reporting. Okay. Majority of the calculated fields are used in reporting and you can use this calculated fields in any kind of condition rules, business process logics, like how we've uh, defined condition, right? Um, when we're looking at uh, um, this learning related validation one. So you can use this calculated field when you're scheduling the, any uh, reports or scheduling any integrations. So in many ways across the tenants, you can use the calculated fields. So without calculated field, your report knowledge is not complete actually. Okay. You cannot say that you're expert in report without knowing a calculated fields because your report can actually extract whatever data that sits in Workday. But if you wanted to tweak the data according to the business requirement, according to the third party vendor system requirements, you definitely need to have calculated field understanding actually. And calculated fields does not have any kind of basics. If you know these basics, you should be able to get this calculated field. All you need to know is which function can be used for which purpose. That is the only thing that you need to know. Okay, there is no basic 
there is no kind of basic knowledge that you would be needing to understand the calculator field practice makes more um, expert in the calculator fields okay so only the thing is which function which calculator field function can be used for which purpose that is the only thing that you need to know which will make you a kind of um, you know the more understandable in the calculator field concept or the more you practice the more uh, you know the kind of options that you get a chance to explore you will be getting a, um, clear understanding on that okay that's what the calculator field is let me get into the tenant okay and so i'll pick the report that we have created the report name is rdcr or active worker setting all active employee Our tenant is behaving in a little weird today. One minute. I'm trying to find out the report that I've created. What is that? Did anything change in tenant? Let me... Let me proxy as logon.
Let me check this one if this is the one or not. No, this is not the one. Okay. This is not the one. Let me create quickly one new report. I'm not able to find the one that I've created. So I'll be creating create custom report and create new report on which we'll be creating a calculated fields. So here, um, I'll name it as all calculated fields report. Okay. All workers Full name. You must see whether it is coming from the deliver field or not. Okay, this is the deliver field and from worker business object. Should be okay. And hire date is the field which gets the higher value. So just to ensure that you are taking the deliver field and Job profile. Yes, yeah. Employee position. Job title. The operator in the sense business title. Okay. And employee type. Employee type. Worker type what happened? Worker type and
management level So we'll be removing all the additional fields and Manager level one. Let's see returns immediate manager. So now we have used all these fields. I'll also use annual compensation, which I can use for creating a calculated fields for getting a bonus amount. Total is paid. Okay, so okay, now we'll run a report. Is this a delivery fee? So now if I run a report. You can see, which we already see in our first report, this one, the blanks. Why these are blanks? Can anyone tell? Recollect what we discussed in the very first session. Why these records are blank? Because of terminated employees. Yeah. Since employee is terminated, we are not seeing active job profile, active position, active job title for terminated employee, okay? That is the reason why for terminated employee, you see blank information, okay? But some third party vendors for whom you're sending employee data, right? They might ask, we need this information for terminated employee also. So send this information for terminated employee as well, they'll ask. But your worker business object, the behavior of the worker business object is, it will look at current active information of an employee and pull that one whatever the current data that is sitting in employee profile your worker business object will pull that information but your vendor is asking to send this information your worker object is returning correct data only because this employee is terminated hence there is no active job profile or active position or active job job title and employee type values and all which is correct only but your vendor is asking that's fine but still we wanted to have this information whatever the last job profile that employee was under be right before termination, we want that information. Whatever the employee was under position during termination, we wanted to have that position. Whatever job title that employee was under during termination, we wanted to have the job title. So your, your report has to look at past dated information because it is looking at current information and it is looking all the information which is correct only. But as per your um, business requirement, your report has to look at your uh, past dated data. So which current report on worker is not possible actually, okay? A worker report cannot go back and get the data. You can actually get as of date report, you should be able to do that. But so when you're sending this to worker, it has to look at all the information actually. So either you need to change your report data source, all which is also not, not active and terminated. Even all active and terminated also sits on a worker business object only, no? So business object is what I'm talking about, okay? So your uh, report solution might not work actually. Probably you need to go for business process transaction related because that's where you know employee got terminated 
and you can actually create a business process transaction report and try to get that one that is one solution but which will not work actually business process will, business process transaction will look only for changes that happen okay but here we are actually sending full file for a vendor every time when whenever integration runs or whenever report runs you are um, getting full file not just changes so your worker is actually looking at current data and it is getting you your business process transaction report will look at the changes and get that then what is the solution to actually get the field that employee was under job profile or position or title during the termination actually so here comes the calculated fields that does this job actually okay your calculated fields can actually go back till that particular date termination date and whatever the terminate during termination time that job profile was for an employee your calculated field can go back and get that information just for that field so whichever field that you are adding that calculated field function can actually go back and get the value as of termination date the function here is look up value as of date okay so look at the value as of the date is a function that we are going to use which will actually go back as of the date and whatever date that you give whether it is a termination date whether it is a, a higher date whether it is any other date it will look at that particular date as of that particular date whatever the job profile that employee was under it will actually pull that information so lookup value as of the date is one of the calculated field function that we'll be using to get this information but before going to the uh, creation of that calculated field just to give you a kind of heads up when you whenever you create a calculated field you have two options one is creating a calculated field from the search bar through create calculated field task create calc field task this is one of the tasks that you can use to create a calculated field the other one is from the report itself okay from the report itself we have an option to create a calculated field okay When you add the fields, when you're adding the fields to the report, you have an option to add calculative, create calculative fields and add the calculative field. Okay. Which is not recommended actually. Okay. The reason why this option is not recommended is if you see, you have an option here at the bottom create calculated fields for the report okay from here also you can create a calculated field but this option is not recommended the reason why this option is not recommended is when you create a calculated field from this field from the field level of report your calculated fields will be restricted to that particular report only your calculated field will be restricted to only for that particular report you cannot use that calculated fields elsewhere actually if you wanted to use the same calculated field in another report, you'll not be able to because you have created a calculated field at report level and that calculated field is specific to that report only. You cannot use that calculated fields in any other report. Okay. Suppose if few other team members are creating a couple of other reports and they have similar kind of field requirements, since they were not able to find this calculated field because this field is restricted to only this report, they need to create another calculated field which return the same value. So if you keep on creating calculated fields in that way, there will be too many calculated fields which functions or which behaves in same way, which are duplicated calculated fields. So recommendation here is do not create a calculated field from the report, but create a calculated field from the search bar. When you create a calculated field from the search bar, you can access the calculated field across the tenant. Okay, if I'm creating a calculated field from the search bar, okay, and um, you know, tomorrow someone is creating a report where they are in need of that calculated field function, okay, and they can actually find out the calculated field whether any existing field is retaining this value or not. They can check and if they find the one that I've created, they can use the same calculated fields in your in the report that they are creating. So you can use calculated fields in multiple reports when you create calculated fields from the search bar at the same time. When you're using the calculated fields in a report that is used in other report, ensure that, that you're not making changes to the calculated field because that is being used in other report also. 
unless if that is a specific requirement for the report that you're creating, you can copy that calculated fields and make your own change. But do not make the change in the calculated fields in your report that is sitting in another report, which might change the result in another report also. So that is one of the best recommendations that I can give and suggest to create a calculated field from the search bar rather than from the field level actually. Okay. That's on the calculated field. Now, going back to the calculated fields for the scenario that we were discussing. Okay. So, what was the function that we were discussing? Lookup value as update is a function that we were looking. Okay. So, I will be giving CF CF lookup value as update. worker job profile okay so by looking at this field anyone can understand that you are looking the value as of it for worker job profile field is what you are looking anyone who looks at this calculated field by looking at the name they can easily understand that's how your naming convention has to be okay and the business object that i wanted to use is whatever the report that i'm using i can actually use the same business object These are all the functions actually. So we are going to create all the major functions, okay, which are critical, which are typical, which are majority requirements. Use those calculated field functions. We are going to learn all those things. If you are going to learn the complicated and the complex calculated field, you should be able to handle very basic things actually. So whatever we are doing, whatever we will be learning, will be um, getting into the I cannot say more complex, but you know, little um, you know, kind of um, uh, workaround is required for such kind of calculated fields. When you are aware of um, the logic and the process of creating those calculated fields, you should be able to handle any of the very basic calculated fields in Workday. So I'm using lookup value as update calculated for a function. The purpose of this lookup value as update function is it looks at the value as of the date that you specify, whether it can be termination date, it can be a hire date, it can be birth date, anything that you specify. It looks at the value as of the date and returns the value. Okay. So clicking on this and clicking on OK. Now the source field, what we want is job profile, right? job profile we want okay. and now from when we wanted to have this job profile effective date as of termination okay termination date okay That's it. okay so i wanted to have a job profile you can see date of as a returns the value of the field that was effective as of the date specified below. Okay, any changes made within the effective date after this date will be ignored. Okay, after termination, any changes were made that will ignore. Within this date, as of the termination date, whatever the job profile that employee had, this will look at this and pull the value. Now click on okay. And I'm going to use this field as a job profile field in the report, okay. I'm going to insert one more field. I'm going to add this calculated field. Now I'm actually creating a calculated field that looks job profile for the terminated employees as of the termination date. Okay. But your report will be looking for active employees, terminated employees for all the employee types. So your report will throw an error now actually. Okay. What is this? Uh, job profile. I'll give calc field. Okay. Just for understanding, I'll give job profile calculate field. Now, if I run this report, I'll definitely see an error in this report when I run because 
the report is looking and getting all the worker types it is getting for contractors it is getting for active employees it is getting for terminated employees for every employee type this is actually returning the value but when i try to run this report after adding that calculated field i am seeing an error actually which says the lookup value as of date calculated field function that you are using has encountered a blank effective date this error occurred due to the request to the calculated field for instance logon mcneil okay can anyone explain why this error came okay so logon mcneil so the first record that it has looked is logon mcneil okay you can see for logon mcneil record it has got but logon mcneil is not a terminated employee right she is active actually so whatever the calculated field that we have created we we'll look at job profile as of the termination date of an employee okay that was the logic that we have added but logan mcneil is an active employee so if it is looking at the termination date she does not have a termination date because she is active that's what the error is saying okay you using the calculated field that is not satisfying for logan mcneil because she is an active employee okay so what we might do is there are two ways one is filtering this report with termination okay so that it will work for terminated employees the other way is logic add a kind, a kind of logic for this calculated field that it should work for only terminated employees for active employees it should not work kind of logic that we can two ways okay now first way is filtering this one for terminated employees so what i'm going to do i'm first going to try first option to see if that works okay so i'll be taking terminated as a kind of status here filtering for terminated employees okay so this is a boolean value that actually looks for terminated actually when i check the description of this if it is a calculated field or if it is a delivered field so this is a delivered field only true for workers primary position is terminated or the contract has ended okay so this should work so what i'm taking is i'm taking boolean value that filters for terminated employees okay the reason why i'm showing this is you need to understand the scenario okay you need to understand the business case actually you'll be getting a lot of requests like this okay termination is equal to yes is what i'm actually selecting here in the filter so when you run a report with this filter your report will run for only terminated employees okay okay selecting this checkbox and running a report on this and now we did not get any error okay we were able to get this you can see here this is the calculated field that we have added for terminated employees we are getting this one so whatever the job profile is we are getting and for delivered field we are not getting anything because it is not looking at the past date the calculated field that we created is looking at the past dated one so for terminated employees it is working but we cannot actually send one report for terminated employees one report for active employees which is a waste of efforts actually okay so what we can do is we can actually do one more logic here which can actually look for both active and terminated employees by making a kind of condition here okay so we'll actually see that condition how we can make but before i go into that i wanted to check everyone are clear till here anyone have any questions anything not clear it's clear other folks you good right yeah, yes i'm okay now so what i was um, here we filtered for terminated employees that is the reason we were able to get but ideally that is not a kind of best solution okay so what i can do i can remove the filter 
and do one more one more calculated fields that looks for only terminated employees and for active employees it should not look for the calculated field that i created okay so i'm going to first go to the filter and remove the termination So removing the filter. Now, So the calculated field function that I'm going to use here is evaluate expression actually, okay. So evaluate expression is the calculated field that actually evaluates the condition and get the results based on the satisfaction of the condition. Now what we need to do here is for active employees, do not look at the calculated field that I created. For terminated employees, look at the calculated field that I created is what we are going to make a condition for this report through evaluate expression calculated field function okay so i'm going to name this calculated field as cf evaluation what is the calculated field name that we have given here um, so lookup value as a bit worker job profile. We're going to give the similar name evaluation. Um, job profile for sorry. Job profile for terminated. Okay. Focus or job profile for all workers second because this will look for both active and terminated, right? The before one that I've created will look for only terminated. Now I'm going to take worker business object under which report is created. The function that I'm going to use here is evaluation, okay, which will be evaluating. The result actually so evaluate expression is the thing that will actually evaluate the condition and guess that one okay so i'm going to this calculated field now the condition okay so what is the field type here so the calculated field or the job profile field that we have taken should be okay so this is the Field, job profile type is a field type. There are multiple field types actually. I think we did not discuss about this. The field type here is single instance, okay. So there are field types like text field which returns the text value, date field type which returns the date value, okay. Number field type which returns the num number, number value which is a numeric value, okay. And um, single instance field which will actually look for single value, okay. But there is a multi instance field which will look for multiple values. Example, we have worker type actually. Worker type will be looking for multiple values, whereas contractor and employee. Employee type will be looking multiple values. Those are fixed term employee, regular employee, intern employee. So we have multiple values actually. So that's a kind of multi instance field. Okay. Benefit elections. Okay. We have multiple benefit plans. Okay. So which is multi instance field. So single instance is nothing but job profile will have a single job profile. Whereas uh, multi instance will have multiple values. It can be example, I said employee type, worker type kind of things. Okay. 
employee id is a single instance field i believe employee id is text value not a single instance employee id is a text value you can see here employee id and the field type of employee id is here text actually okay 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 any date fields can be date type actually okay now since job profile is a single instance i'm going to select here as a single instance okay and worker can be job profile will be setting in job profile business object so i'm going to select job profile and add the default value as a job profile okay okay so now what it will do is by default it will return the delivered value job profile okay which work day offers okay by default for every employee this will provide default value as a job profile but we're going to add a condition here get default value for all the employees but look at this condition what we are adding is what we are saying okay for terminated employees for terminated employees look at the calculated field what we have created okay so now i'll be taking the one that i've created So here the condition is for terminated employees, look at this value. Other than this one, anything is there, get the default value, what we are saying. Okay, so it's kind of if condition. If employee is terminated, get this one, else return this value. In all other cases, by default value, get this default value is what we are saying. Okay, now clicking on okay, replacing this calculated field with the one that we added in the report. Okay, so I'll be removing this one because this looks for only terminated workers. Now I'm removing this one. And in this place, I'm going to add the evaluation one that I created. Okay. Now if I run this report, since we classified for terminated employees, only look at the lookup value as of date calculated field. In other cases, look at the default value is what we have classified. Now, if I run this report, I will not be getting any error. For all active employees, I should be getting default value. For terminated employees, I should be getting the calculated field that I created. You can see here, this is the calculated field that we replaced actually. You can see, now we did not get any error. For logon, it picked up the default value. Okay, but for terminated employee, you can see here, Oliver, delivered value is returning blank, but the calculated field that we created, is returning the value actually. So, so we, the evaluated expression, whatever we added, is looking at the condition that we added, and as per the satisfaction of the condition, it is returning this value. If Oliver is active, this would have not looked at the calculated field. It would have looked at the default value that we have added. Since this employee is terminated, looked at the calculated field that we have created. Okay. So that is what lookup value as of date calculated field function will be doing actually. Okay. Similarly, as an activity, I have done for job profile. Okay. So one of you or anyone can actually try this one. Management level. Okay. I'm returning blank for management level. You can try the same process, whatever I've done today, and get your observation. So I wanted to have management level for terminated employees and active employees in this report. You can take a reference of the calendar field that I've created and get the management level. Okay, get this and get your observations or any kind of blockers that you'll be seeing, which we can actually clarify. So again, I'm saying calculated fields require practice. Okay, understanding you might understand in this session, but tomorrow when you see or when you get a requirement, you'll not be able to estimate that one or plan to deliver that one because you've not practiced. You don't know the option that calculated field is giving. So you'll be in a hard situation to actually get that one. So practice the calculated field functions, whatever we are discussing, and try to get that. Okay. So yeah. So the evaluation calculated field will actually evaluate the expression and gets that one. Okay. Now I'll I'll create one more calculated field and we'll end up for the day. But we have evaluation function also we'll which we'll be covering here.
Okay. So now let's say I have, let me actually show the result and talk about that. Okay. So we have, let's say management level is there. Okay. You're seeing a management level, which actually is giving you a value for vice president to chief executive officer like that. It is giving numeric value as well as string value, text value. Okay. So generally, uh, you no, know, in typical scenarios, your vendor, third party vendors might not be accepting both the values. Actually, if you're integrating this to any of a source system or target system, they may not be accepting both numeric value as well as text value in the same column. What they might ask is, we actually only accept text values. We don't need any numeric value. Can we actually remove the numeric value for the management field and send us? So, but delivered field is giving you the same format. Okay, so you don't have any option to actually choose any other delivered field that gives only text values. The only option that you might have is tweak or modify the existing delivered field through calculate field function actually. Okay, so through calculate field function, we can actually meet this requirement which can remove the numeric value and gets only text values. Okay, the function that we are going to use here is the function that we are going to hear is substring value actually. Okay. Substring is a function that will be breaking the text values. Okay. Create a calculated field. See so if what we want text value from management level. The function that we're going to use here is substring actually. Substring management level. Text. Okay. Text value only. Okay. So I'm giving the business object as worker. Function is substring, right? Okay. And the text field that we're going to use here is management level. The field type of this management level is text actually. Okay, I'm going to take management level okay management level is the text field that i have taken what we wanted to have here is we wanted to have this eight to go off and get the text values okay so there are two ways of actually doing one is through fixed position actually, the position where the character is sitting in, the numeric character is sitting in. Okay, so that fixed position we can go, or the space between the space we are seeing, right? Between eight to the text value, we are seeing the space. We can consider that space as a kind of character and remove that eight before that space. In the two ways we can do. I will go with first one way, create position, Fixed length, okay, fixed position, okay. So we are seeing eight in the first position and second space we are seeing. From third character we are seeing string value is starting, okay. So I'll give fixed position is starting character three I'll give, okay. Because from third character your value is starting, okay. And until the end of the text field, okay. So if I give this, and run this, use this calculated field. From the third character, I'm going to get all the values. Okay. That is one method. The other method I'm going to show after running the report.
I'm going to use this one. Okay. Running this report. You can see management of calculator that we have taken has removed the numeric values actually because we started from the Character three from where the string value is starting, text value is starting. That's the reason why it has eliminated all the before characters and considered the starting character that we have given actually from the third character. That is one way that we can do. The other way is considering the space as a kind of character and before the space, remove all the values that we're going to say. Okay, that is one way of doing. Okay, so how we can do that is I'm going to edit this calculated field and change that. Edit and here we have taken a fixed position, right? I'm going to take before a delimiter. Okay. What is a delimiter? Space we have, right? I'm going to take single space. Yes, single space is it? character that I've taken, direction is backward, okay, or I'll take forward, okay, before a delimiter, single space, forward, I've taken, now if I run this report, the other way of doing this is through this, let me run this and see what it will come, okay. From the report, Okay, so if I take, if I have taken forward direction, you can see it has taken forward direction and got only numeric values. Okay, so if you have that, if you wanted to send only numeric values, the one that I've created with forward direction should work. Okay, if I go with backward direction, okay. If you go with backward direction, whatever the result that we wanted to have to get only extracted text values, you should be saying that. Okay. Okay, now we have seen, we have changed this to backward direction and let's see whether this has returned the value how we wanted to have, okay. Scroll board and comment. Okay, so now it has taken single space from here actually, which is also Kind of requirement if you have anything specific, you can actually do. Since since it has taken backward direction, it is taking the first position. Now, what I can do is in order to get started from this thing, I can change after a delimiter. Okay. After a delimiter, I can change to have different options that you can actually play around. Okay. So I've taken after a delimiter with a single space.
I'll run this one. So multiple ways, based on the requirement that you have, you can actually play around with the calculated fields that will actually get you the results how you want, OK? OK. So it is now what it is looking at. It is looking at this one actually. Okay, from this one, it is looking first space. It is looking, but we can actually make one more change to see if we can get the actual value. So in this way, you can actually troubleshoot the business requirement that you might be getting. Okay. Troubleshoot the business requirement that you might be getting and play around with the functions how you want it to have. So once you are aware of uh, in the process of building this kind of calculated fields, you can actually understand the business requirement that you get from your stakeholders or your third party vendors from anyone. Okay. Now you can see. So with um, you know the option that we have selected, so we got whatever we have done from the first um, option that we did, right? Uh, the character fixed position. The same result we got when we actually used this as a delimiter. So what we have done, we have used single space as a delimiter after a delimiter with forward direction we have taken. Okay, after delimiter with forward direction we have taken and we got this value actually. It is considering single space and after this forward direction we have taken, okay? In that way, we were able to get the value we want that is actually eliminating numeric characters. Clear? I know with multiple other options, you know, I was trying to make you understand how it works, but ultimately we were able to get the second option also to get the result as how we want it to have okay so that is with substring function okay 